atmosphere is amazing. It's so good to see Kings fans rocking jerseys again. It's been a long time, so it's nice to see the city kind of coming together for something and really excited to be a part of it. I said this is your championship team right here, so you heard it here first. Go Kings! Go Kings! Light the beam! Kings of four. Let's go. Light the beam. You heard it all right there. The Kings have another chance to light the beam tonight, and they are taking on the Gold State Warriors for game two of their first playoff series in 17 years. And we are hearing a lot of big predictions for the beam team, and we also want to hear from you. How long do you think this series will go? Make sure you scan the QR code on your screen and let us know right now. And let's get outside because we have got Luke Cleary in Doco where fans are getting ready for another great game. And then Kevin John is inside the Golden One Center where the Kings are heading into game two with a lot of confidence and a lot of momentum. And Kevin, they will have a tough challenge tonight against the Warriors, make no mistake, right? Oh, absolutely. The Warriors are the defending champions for a reason. They haven't gone down 0-2 in a series since 2007, so expect the Warriors to come out tonight and play one heck of a game. Uh, with that being said, you never know who's going to be at Golden One Center. And tonight here for the game is none other than Sacramento Republic FC head coach Mark Briggs. So, Coach Briggs, come on out here. We may have lost a little bit of light, but your smile lights up everything. <laughs> there so, you go. I'll take that. I'll take that. Exactly. So, Coach Briggs, my, my question to you. Obviously, you're wearing a Kings jersey. You told me before this interview you were a huge Malik Monk fan. What is it about Malik Monk that... You bring so, that you enjoy so much about him. Just his energy and the things he the things he brings to the court. Uh, he's exciting to watch and he can do special things. Now the thing is, the, you're, the Kings are not just the only good team here in the 916. So so far, Sacramento Republic FC is off to an unbeaten record. Have the Kings inspired you guys so far this early in the season? Yeah, I think seeing the Kings be so successful and seeing what they bring to the court and the energy these fans bring, it can only inspire us. And then, you know, I know that you have a close relationship with Kings head coach Mike Brown. What have you learned from Mike Brown um, that you could either have applied to coaching or just in life in general? Just in general, right? It's humility, the things that he's done. He's a, he's a special coach and a special person to have here in Sacramento. And I think I'm fortunate to have a relationship with him, but the city's fortunate to have him. You know, many times you said the city. When you guys made the run in the U.S. Open Cup last summer, you saw the city come out and rally behind you. What does it mean to see the city come out right now and rally behind the Kings? It's a special city. Uh, we experienced it with the Open Cup, and now everyone's experienced, the Kings are experiencing it with the playoff run. It's a special city, a special fan base, and you can already feel it now. It's electric. It definitely is electric. I'm hearing the cowbells all throughout here. Now I got to ask you, do you have a prediction for tonight? And what is that? There's only one prediction, and it's got to be another, another Kings win. Another Kings win. So you heard it right there. Coach Mark Briggs, Sacramento Republic FC has predicted the Kings win tonight and go up 2-0 to zero in the series against the Golden State Warriors. Well, Coach Briggs, you had a hot dog when you came over here, so I'm going to let you get back to your hot dog. <laughs> but one last thing you want to say to the fans who are watching out there. Just get behind the Kings team tonight. Let's get behind them and rally them home for another win. Sacramento strong. There you go. Sacramento strong. We'll see if they light the beam tonight. In the meantime, I'm going to let Coach Briggs get back to this hot dog, and I'm going to send it back to you in the studio. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kevin. We're definitely lighting the beam tonight, and the energy is real at Doco outside Golden One Center. There are a bunch of beams, swords, uh, balloon crown hats to go around, and fans there are telling us that the key really is to come early so you get to experience everything from the playoffs, playground zone, 916 zone, and that's exactly where our Luke Cleary is right now out at Doco. Luke, how's the energy out there tonight? Well, let me tell you, Alex, things are getting loud out here. You hear the cowbells. You might hear them behind me. And, you know, this moment has a lot of these fans thinking about history. I mean, first of all, the Sacramento Kings snapped that historic playoff drought in convincing fashion by winning game one against the defending champions, the Golden State Warriors. Let's take a look out here as you see just a sea of Kings fans in their black and purple jerseys, a few of them wearing those 1980s throwback jerseys. And no doubt there are some folks in here who have never even seen the Kings 
have a winning season. There are others who remember the glory years, the early 2000s, the Western Conference Finals, and those who remember the struggle to keep the Sacramento Kings here in Sacramento. Earlier tonight, we spoke with Mayor Daryl Steinberg, who was a big part of that push to keep them here. And I asked him, is this moment vindication? You better believe it's vindication. I mean, the late, great David Stern um, and the Board of Governors had a decision to make. And, you know, it came down to our ability and willingness to build this iconic arena behind us. But we had an intangible advantage. And that was this community, this city that supported the King since 1985 through good times and through bad, like the city itself. It's resilient. This is an inclusive city. It's an engaged city. And we fight for what's ours. And as we take another look here at the Golden One Center, you know, it's just a remarkable piece of architecture. The energy inside of that building is awesome. It's going to be loud tonight as the Sacramento Kings go on and hope to take game two in this series. Alex. All right, Luke, thank you so much. And of course, with the playoff game comes the sweet, sweet sound of cowbells. Because if you didn't know, back in the day, Sacramento was not so affectionately labeled a cow town by opposing players, primarily from teams like the Los Angeles Lakers. But you know how we do. We took that as a badge of honor because people started bringing cowbells of all shapes and sizes to the arena, adding to the Arco Thunder noise. Fans sitting behind the opposing benches especially made an effort to bring those cowbells, ringing them as close to players and as coaches as they could, especially during those timeouts. So we turned that insult into a home court advantage, and that became a reputation that fans are still upholding today. So let me know, how long do you think that we'll be ringing the cowbells for this series? You can scan that QR code on your screen and let us know your predictions. We'll be sharing some of those predictions as well as your celebrations right after the break. We'll be back after this. All right, we've been asking for all of your Kings predictions and celebrations, and you have been texting what game you think the Kings win of round one in the playoffs. So let's go ahead and read some of your comments. Of course, Sacramento Kings will win in seven games. Another viewer writing in, Kings in seven games. We had a lot of seven games. Sacramento Kings win in six games. We also have another six game here. And then Sacramento Kings will win the thread Q. And then we have another viewer who wrote in, six games and let's see what else we got we also got some really great family pictures and stories check out this family right here another viewer sending in us this picture and then we have another sacramento kings win in six games and some of you have also been sending us your kings pictures of course keep them coming we love to see those family pictures and we also want to show you these fans this is michael and Lori landberg they're from south sacramento we had a chance to speak with them today they have been kings fans for a very long time and have passed down the fandom to their kids and grandchild Michael tells us his first Kings game went all the way back to 1986 at the old barn, Arco Arena, number one in the Thomas, and he went to the game with his grandpa. And this playoff run is exciting for them because of all the energy that they get to see on the court. He's this young team, Keegan Murray and Keegan and Murray. <laughs> and Sabonis, you know, these, these guys are just, they're amazing. It's going to go seven. The Warriors aren't going to lay down. It's it's going to be exciting. It's going to be stressful. You know, we got two good teams playing against each other. You know, the Warriors have been through this before, and you got the new guys on the on the Kings team. And so some of them, it's their first time, right? So I think that experience and then the Warriors experience together is going to bring for a seven-game series. Love all their gear there. And the Landbergs also are excited about the beam. They feel that people across the United States who are in the Sacramento Kings part of the beam, they feel like they're just excited because of just seeing the beam across the country. And you can keep all of your Kings predictions coming. How long do you think this series will go? Scan the QR code. Let us know. Send us your pictures so we can air them right here. Let us know what you think about the beam team. We read all of your texts, all of your comments, all of your questions, and we can't wait to see what you send. All right, after the break, a family is begging for change after the man once accused of their son's murder appears in court. We have their story coming up next.
A family is sharing their story as they fight for justice after their 20-year-old son was shot and killed just last year. The Lopez family tells our Jeannie Wynn that their son, Jacob Lopez, loved music and was a loving father. They are hoping that by sharing his story, that they will hold the people responsible, accountable, and also save another young life. We lost our son almost a year ago. It's been nearly a year since Jacob Lopez was shot and killed. Citrus Heights police say the 20 year old was killed here at the Birdcage Village Apartments. It doesn't get easier. Um, the pain is still there. We lost a son, a father, a, a brother, an uncle, a nephew, fiance. At the time, police charged Tony Diaz with the murder and possession of a machine gun. But as the case moved forward, the Sacramento County District Attorney's Office says there was only enough evidence to charge him with the possession charge. Diaz ultimately pled no contest and was sentenced to 180 days in jail. There is no closure right now. Here we are again. Here we are again. Just last week, the 21-year-old was slapped with more weapons-related charges. The Sacramento County Sheriff's Office say detectives confronted Diaz at a home last week with multiple guns in the property. Because of this, the sheriff's office says it violated his probation. Not guilty and denials will be entered. Last Friday, Diaz faced a judge for his new charges. There's so many loopholes in the justice system where things like this can just get, you know, it becomes a statistic, right? So it really didn't come as a surprise. With a not guilty plea, the Lopez family says it's clear the road to justice for their son's death will be a long one. I don't understand why he would say not guilty. He's, he's very guilty. This is not the first time. Um, this is not the first gun charge. It's not even our second gun charge. It's his third. And the second gun charge took a life. That was my son. And now we're here we are again with a third gun charge. But it's not only their son's life they're fighting for. The Lopez family believes it'll only be a matter of time before someone else gets hurt or loses a life. There's other mothers who are dealing with the same things that I'm dealing with, and it needs to stop. Like, when is enough enough? One of those moms, Anita Razzo, whose son was also killed last April. Giovanni Pisano, also known as DJ Gio, a beloved Sacramento DJ, was shot and killed in an Atomist neighborhood. This is the aftermath of losing a son. And now Stephanie and I are together, we're fighting together to, to prevent another mother from feeling the way that we're feeling. Through this tragic bond, the Lopez family is hoping for justice. We're just hoping that the justice system stands up um, for people like my son and other families who are going through similar situations that um, justice, you know, they look at this as a repeat offense and that they don't let people like this out again. As of this point, nobody has been charged in the murder of Jacob Lopez. And here are some other stories people are also talking about today. 17 people were arrested and five more are still wanted in connection to two rival groups within the East Indian Sikh community. Since 2018, fights escalated to shootings. 11 men were shot in total. This includes the five shot outside the Stockton Sikh temple just last August and then two shot outside the Sacramento Sikh temple in March. The man accused of shooting at a Roseville hospital and making threats against the state capitol last week was in court today. Jackson Piney has been charged with attempted murder and assault with a firearm, arm, among other charges. He did not enter a plea and is being held without bail. And then protesters shut down an entire intersection at Franklin Boulevard and 4th Avenue in Sacramento. The altercation was over a drag queen story time for kids inside the Poppy and Pot Ceramic Studio in Sacramento. Officers did have to use pepper spray and arrest at least one person. We had a historic winter with days of what felt like endless amounts of rain and snow. But is California wasting opportunities to save this water? The ABC 10 weather team has been looking into the question in their upcoming series, Water Wasted. Here is a preview of their research into the power of water in our state. If it's not working, show me the proof. I often when people go, ah, oh, they're tearing their hair now, oh, it's terrible, we manage water horribly. And like, no, we don't. Now we are in a place where we are just supremely bound to knowing every water drop. 
We're often so focused on our engineered infrastructure above the surface that we forget to utilize effectively the natural infrastructure. And what we need to be able to do is capture water when it's available, move it and store it so that we can have water supply throughout. And this year, if we had been able to have the Delta Conveyance Project online in January, we would have captured another 228,000 acre feet of water. And that's enough to feed about 2.3 million people or about 800,000 households. All right, let's bring in meteorologist Rob Karlmark, who has been looking into the Sierra snowpack. I mean, why should people really care about all the snow that's hours away, really? <laughs> this is one of the fundamental questions. You know, what does this have to do with me? And, you know, Alex, snowpack is California's ace up our sleeve. To stress its importance, Alex, our snowpack supplies about one third of the water in the state. And most importantly, it comes online slowly over time to keep agriculture and the environment flowing until the next rainy season. But as we've learned recently, it's not a given. And if the storms don't come or it's too warm, we miss out on precious water drop by drop. As time has gone on from the 1920s, when our population was quite small and the agricultural demands on water were small, and then the, um, the environmental demands on water were also small, right? All of that. We've gone from that all the way to this time where our population is enormous and we have all of these demands to where we're down really to each water drop. Now the Department of Water Resources still does manual poll surveys, as you see here, to determine water content in the snow. But new airborne surveys can now scan entire watersheds from 23,000 feet and accurately determine snow depth to about two and a half inches. And this time they could be about 98% accurate and helping water managers know exactly how much snowpack and how much water is coming into their system. The program is so successful, Alex, that many other Western states are using the same process and technology to help them determine snowpack as well. And Rob, you mentioned that mm -hmm. uh, our snowpack is just one third of our water supply. So where does the rest of it come from? Really, it comes from everywhere. You know, it's so valuable, so useful, and so scarce in some years. You really have to utilize every source that you have. So, of course, the easiest one to know is because we can see it would be reservoirs. We also have groundwater, which is useful everywhere. We do have desalination. A lot of people think that we don't have it or it's not to scale. It, we definitely have it, and there's more on the way. And we also have urban wastewater treatment. So what used to be treated as sewage to a safe level and then pushed out to the ocean they could treat it, to, treat it to such a high degree that you can use it again in your homes. And before we go, I do want to mention this story is part of our weather team's upcoming series, Water Wasted. So tomorrow we'll be hearing from Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods. And Rob, can you talk a little bit about what she's going to focus on? She's really going to focus in on reservoirs. You know, when we think about water supply in California, the easiest one to understand is a big giant lake because that's the water you can see. You can see it come up and you can see it come down. So she has more on the state of the reservoirs, what they're really used for, and also what the future of that big water supply is in the state. All right. Thank you, Rob. We appreciate it. All ABC News programs and platforms will be featuring content about the issues surrounding water. You can catch the power of water on all ABC News platforms this Thursday. And let's go ahead and take a look outside at our weather right now. Current temperature is not looking too bad. Sacramento at 58, Stockton at 60. But let's take a look right now at the snow coming on the way. We have a winter weather advisory. You can take a look at that right there. And then let's get straight to our 10 day weekend. Not looking too bad. Loving this forecast. All right, we are so hyped about the Kings being in the playoffs. We love everyone sharing their photos, their videos, and their best Kings game memories with us. But we have one more question because we are hearing a lot of big predictions for the Beam team, and we want to know how long do you think this series will go? Make sure you scan the QR code on your screen. Let us know. That is it for us tonight. I'm off to watch the game and, of course, watch that beam being lit in the sky tonight. So let's go, Kings.
Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone, and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com, or you can even send me a text message at 916 321 3310.